Yeah, because there's absolutely nothing sexy about feet. I don't even know why we have them. Saving Grace by Julie Garwood is a classic Highlands romance novel. When Lady Joanna's cruel husband dies, she does not shed a tear. But then the treacherous King John demands that she remarry, and her brother chose his best buddy, Scottish warrior Gabriel McBain. Our feisty heroine is determined not to love him, but mayhem ensues when he turns out to be a nice guy who can wear the hell out of a kilt. Then, royal intrigue threatens their newly formed alliance, and our heroine realizes that she actually loves her new husband and his gruff but loving clan. Hello and welcome to The Best Book Ever, the podcast where we get to know interesting people by asking them about their favorite book. I'm so excited to have USA Today best-selling romance author Naima Simone joining me today. Naima is an author I have admired for so long, and I knew we would have a lot of laughs when we finally got to sit down and chat. We had so much fun discussing the art of the perfect sex scene, which this book is full of, and why she and I are perfect historical romance fans. Spoiler alert, it's because neither one of us is all that interested in the accuracy of the historical details, so we kind of just go with the flow. This book is new to me, but I absolutely fell in love with it. And I think I might agree with Naima that Saving Grace is the best book ever. Hi, Naima. Welcome to the Best Book Ever podcast. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here because I'm a reader first and I love, love, love books. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited to talk to you. I can't even tell you. I want to start with, I had your best friend, KGB, Kenya Gory Bell, (laughs) on episode 16. (laughs) And she talked about you both on and off the record. I wish women could hear their best friends talking about them when they are not in the room. Because it was the joy of my day to hear her talking about you. I mean, (laughs) you have such a friend in her. She adores you i adore her she's she's a wonderful author and she's an even better friend i I really i love her yeah yeah in fact when i had her on the show at the end she talked a long long time about a book that you had upcoming and i was like great and and then and then she went oh no i got you can't say anything about that i got an early copy of it (laughs) after she like said everything (laughs) yes and she was like it's the best thing name has ever done it must have been a road to Rose Bend because she she made me feel like because that was like my first like full single title release. Oh, HP. Okay. And I was so incredibly nervous about it. And so I sent it to her knowing that she was going to be like honest and nervous. And when she read it, you you every needs a best friend who makes them feel like their favorite author in the world like she makes me feel like a sparkly (sighs) unicorny Nalini Singh that's what she does for me (laughs) (laughs) and she she like boosted my confidence so much about what I was writing and and she's honest she tells you what you need to fix but um she just made me feel so good gave me such confidence about what I was doing because it's a new step in my career too and she made me feel like okay you got this girl (laughs) what what did you do before romance? Did you write other genres? No, I've always written romance, but I've written um, small books. This was the biggest book that I had written. Oh, so it I was see. like, I write category romance, um, novellas, and categories like 60 to 65K. But this one was like 95,000. I see. And it, my very first release with HQN. So I was nervous. Can you tell my listeners what you mean when you say uh, HQN and when you say category romance? What does that mean when writers say they write category romance? Category romance is the the shorter books. They're like 50K, 45 to 50K. And I write for Harlequin Desire, which is their cat- one of their category lines. And they're just more streamlined, a full romance, full story, full plot, very satisfying. But it's just a small 
all are word counts. So the romance is very couple focused because you have a shorter word count to tell that story. And single title is between 75 and 90 K or in my case, like 95 or 100,000 because I'm wordy. <laughs> you have a lot to say. <laughs> yeah. And my editor would tell you, stop being, will tell me, stop being so wordy. So, but they're the, the bigger books. And you know, where you can have a, a bigger world because you have more world, more word count. You can, you can go into different side character stories and maybe a secondary plot, um, a, just a much fuller romance, fuller story because you have so much more room to write. You are one of the most prolific romance writers that I know of. So, <laughs> I want to ask you, tell me what's great. We're going to get into what's great about reading romance. Yes. But tell me what you think is great about writing romance. Um, Because you get to write a happily ever after every single time. <laughs> where, the, where we are right now, especially like the times that we're living in, that's just not guaranteed. You know, we don't know what tomorrow was. We don't know if we start a journey of even like a relationship and love or family, what's going to happen at the end of that? What I love about romance is that no matter what my characters go through, whether it's loss, grief, death, family, dis- you know, dysfunctional family, whatever it is, I know at the end of that book that I'm going to be giving them a happily ever after. Do you think you'll ever take a stab at historical romance? Oh, God, no. <laughs> 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 no, like because I now don't get me wrong because I absolutely adore historical romance I cut my teeth on it like Joanna Lindsay Julie Garland, um Be- Beatrice Small like all of them like they were my favorite romance writers they introduced me to the love of the stories that I have now so I and I still read it I read Stacey Reed I read you know Kerrigan Byrne I just I love it. But all that research, Mm. I am opposed to research. I might be, I might be religiously opposed to research. (laughs) Yeah, it does. It looks like a lot of schoolwork. There's so much you have to get right. And the, the, the writers that the authors that I mentioned, they nail it every single time they put you right in the story and you can see everything from the clothes to the mannerisms, mm-hmm. to the customs, to the language that, that they're using. It's so beautiful. And it just transports you to this other world, like in, in history, you know, but I know I don't have the patience. I don't have like the fortitude. <laughs> I don't even yeah. know if, like my mind is going to grab all those details. I just, I bow down to them. I'm not going to do it. (laughs) And I have heard from friends who write historical romance that um, historical readers are the most um, like they will be the ones who will come to you and say, actually, Mm -hmm. the shoe would not have had laces in that year or something like that. And I've heard them do it. (laughs) <laughs> and because, and I'm just telling every historical rom- romance author out there, I am you. I am the reader you just love because I'm not calling you on anything because I don't know it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if you tell me they had like George Jetson's like spaceships in Regency England, I'm like that tracks. Sure, why not? <laughs> Let's do it. (laughs) And you know, what's funny is even if I did notice, which I wouldn't, but if I did notice like, oh, her shoes really wouldn't have had shoelaces. I don't care if the story is great. Lace up your shoes, baby. Right. Go Go for it. (laughs) You're just ahead of your time. Yeah. (laughs) That does not take me out of the story. Like, unless it's like truly glaring, because I'm just telling you historical romance, you have to make, if I notice, it has to be truly <laughs> <Yes>. glaring. <laughs> yes, right. And you might want to correct that if I notice, because I'm not the person who notices all that. I'm not the person who knows. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing I have to say about that. <laughs> now, were you always a romance reader? Yes. Mm. Well, actually, you know, my first books were of course like when I was younger you know but I, I were the fairy tales you know so I, I blame my mother she <laughs> put me on this path 
you know, because <laughs> they, they were the first books that I ever read. But then, you know, I mean, of course, as a kid, I, I read Charlie and a Chocolate Factory and, um, you know, all those books. My f- absolute favorite book to this day and that I still reread every year and I'm absolutely obsessed with is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Oh, my God. So that's like my favorite book of all time. So those were the books I was reading when I was younger, you know, like in that and Super Fudge and all of that. And of course, Judy Bloom. Oh, but I when I got to, oh, right, like uh, we used to f- fight over those books, like in the yes. library, Brawl that's... in Isle 2. Did you <laughs> see you even remember? Did you yes. ever read Forever, her teenage book? Yes. <gasps> did your mom know? No. No, mine didn't either. (laughs) And then my mom got her hands on it. And oh my God, we had to have one of those talks. Like, do we need to talk about what's in this book? And I was like, nope, we do not. I'm good. I'm good. (laughs) That's how we all, my friends and I, that's how we learned. That's how we learned everything. Well, I learned everything from romance books. But I tell you, if my mother, she never read forever, but if she did, did not complain about forever since it was her books I was reading that That's taught me right. all of that. So do you ever venture these days? Do you venture into any other um, genres or do you mostly read romance right now? I mostly read romance, but I absolutely love Lisa Gardner, which is like thriller, um, mm. like, you know, procedural and thriller and suspense. I love horror. When you say horror, do you mean l- like um, slasher books or do you mean like paranormal or? They have either like ghosts in them or mm. something is possessed, something is haunted. Uh, there's like a murderer, <laughs> a serial killer murderer, of course, because you can't just kill one person. <laughs> <laughs> there's a bar of scary and you have to meet it. Yeah. So, yeah. And John Saul would exceed that. He always it was just spooky because it was like somebody was always possessed. Um, and it was like, and it dealt with like family secrets and history and everything. And he would just, he, I, I just love him. Love, love, love his books. He will terrify you. <laughs> okay. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but what kind of um, paranormal romance do you like? I love my favorite, absolute favorite paranormal romance. Author. Well, just, author period but fantastic paranormal romance is Nalini Singh and then I love Christine Feehan, Sherilyn Kenyon just reading uh, this paranormal romance series that Kristen Ashley just wrote I, I just love paranormal like it doesn't matter if it's shifters if it's witches oh like um Shirley Gray a new witch um series with their around this family of witches and it just blows my mind. It just blows my mind. It's one of my favorites. It's called The Thornheart Trials. And the first book is A Curse in Darkness. And the hero is the alpha of the hellhound. Mm. I'm just going to take a pause for a minute for you to just absorb that. <laughs> You're really big on promoting authors and new releases. And every time I look at it, I think... I haven't heard of any of these books and you're always so you always find these great new releases. It's really fun to learn about other books in addition to your books. Yeah, because I'm just a reader. I am a reader first because reading energizes me to write, you know, Mm. just gives me that enthusiasm and the excitement to write. You know, so I'm always a reader first and I'm always looking for a new book and a new author because most of the time the author isn't new to anybody else. They're just new to yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. And I, love oh, I have it when a whole backlist of binge. Yeah. I adore that. Let's get to the book we're talking about today then. Saving okay. Grace by Julie Garwood. Do you remember how you found this book? You know, I'm, I'm certain my mother had to have it. Mm. I'm just so certain because like Julie Garwood was one of the first historical romance writers that, that I read. Yeah. So it had to be her because I didn't have a job and I was still dependent on her to give me my fix. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the, the mom's the mom's the influence here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but I mean, everything, like all the books 
I, and, but I knew Julie Garwood, of course. So, because, I mean, she had so many books come out before this one. And as soon as I saw it was Julie Garwood, I mean, snatch it up. Yeah. Because she, oh, her historicals are just amazing. Amazing. I think I've never read anything of hers. I know so many romance authors who cite her as an influence, but I Ugh. don't think I've read any. I'm t- you have to read Honor Splendor. Okay. Because there, it's really hard as a reader to say, okay, pick out moments that really imprint on you. But in, in, and for me, like just a, as an aside, it was really hard for me to d- decide between let's read Honor Splendor or Saving Grace. Because Honor Splendor, there is this moment, one of my absolute favorite moments in romance period out of all the reading I've done in all the years and I'm of a certain age so that's a lot of years but it is one of my favorite moments ever and it's in honor splendor so you have to read that and the lion's lady that in castles those are the three I'm like read read now okay (laughs) are they all scotland no, some of them are mostly she writes Highlanders, but um, Lion's Lady is, is an English um, lord. Okay. But she was raised in the Americas with the Native Americans. Really? And yes, even though she's an English lady, she was, it's a whole story. And she was raised with the Native Americans since she was a baby. Because I think her parents were killed and she and they took her in. Are you talking about Julie Garwood or are you talking about the person in The Lion's Lady? No, The Lion's Lady, not oh. Julie Garwood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, the Lion's Lady. Okay. I was th- I thought that was a very dramatic life. My goodness. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Okay. But so, Naima, I never said I was the sharpest tool in the shed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to keep up here. <laughs> okay. Oh God. Why don't you tell our listeners what Saving Grace is about? So Saving Grace is about Lady Joanna. She was married to an English baron. And at the beginning of the book, you find out that her husband, she's in like the, the chapel praying and the priest who the visiting Scottish priest and his vassal comes to her and is like, your husband was killed. And she starts screaming at him like, tell me you're lying. You're not lying. This can't be real. Don't lie to me. And then you're like, oh my God, she's so torn up over her husband being dead. And then she's like, I have to go into the chapel and pray. And then she goes to the chapel and she's like, Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Because <laughs> she was in the most awful marriage. Mm-hmm. He was abusive um, mentally and physically. And her, and, but she knows this secret that is detrimental to the king, King John at the time. And so her brother arranges for her to get out from under the imprisonment of King John. And, you know, for her to, because he's like he's very protective of her, especially since he's found out she was in this abusive marriage and arranges for her to be married to um, the, the Lord of, or the head of the of clan McBain, who was Gabriel to get her out of England and in a safety. And so she is, she's timid because of what she went, to, went through and she's quiet. And I mean, cause she's kind of <laughs> traumatized, you know, but she's yeah. so strong. She has this strength that is, you have to like look to see it. And so when she gets there, she's like a duck out of water, you know, (laughs) and they think she's like this weak English lady, but she ends up winning the hearts of the entire clan and her husband. And the journey of that is the most, it's just one of the most beautiful romances out there. It's funny. It's romantic. It has suspense, um, thrill, like exciting moments where like death almost happens, like with the wolves. And it's just, oh, it's so good. I was like, when I told you about it, I was so worried. I was like, is she going to like this? Because it's like, it was written like years ago. And then I remember I loved it and I I reread it because I was like, we're going to discuss it. I need to re I need to reread it. Here's an excuse. (laughs) And 
as I'm reading it, especially where we are now in in society and what we're like, everything that's coming at us now, especially as women, it holds. Like yes. this holds so well, the message in it. I was so blown away over some of the, some of the like dialogue that I was reading. I was like, I'm about to cry. (laughs) Do you know, I was thinking that in particular, the talk of consent is very modern in romance novels. Mm -hmm. And there are some very explicit moments where, He's kind of talking sexy, talk to her, and she says, we're going to do that. And he says, not unless you want to. Yes. And I went, I, 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 what did you just say? Like, that's <laughs> not what I expected. What do you mean if you want to? That wasn't said in these older romance right. novels. She was so ahead of her time, like yes. if, with consent. And, and also with one of the things I absolutely love about Julie Garwood, like, I'm a hero writer, like as a writer, I love writing heroes. And as a reader, like the hero usually always catches me and I fall in love with the hero first. With her, her heroes are all alpha, all like these strong, like mostly silent, but so protected. They're wonderful, but it is her heroine down to every single one of them that captures my heart. She has written the best heroines in romance, especially in historical romance. Now, does it bug you when, because there were a lot of moments that were, I mean, it's set in the, in 1200, which I, don't know that I've ever read a book set in the year 1200. I thought that was kind of nuts. When I saw that in the <laughs> prologue, I went, what the Wow, hell? we went back. We went We're almost back. in the time of Jesus. I know. That was exactly <laughs> what I thought. But there were a couple of moments where Joanna was openly defiant to her husband mm-hmm. or openly defiant of the rules. And sometimes readers get very pissed when... Um, we sort of slap feminist ideals on historical characters. I really like it. I thought it worked well in this. Yeah. So that's why I wanted to ask, are you a fan of that normally? Yes. I I mean, absolutely. Like, cause that, that's the kind of heroine I write. Um, But I, I think the kind of heroines I write are more like Joanna, not always in your face, but have that more, the the more quiet strength that grows in her voice she will find a way to make her voice heard and then I think it was just so organic to her character arc in this book you know as she felt more safe because she's coming out of a marriage where she was intimidated bullied told she was dumb told she couldn't read um and then not only by her husband but by the church I mean, she yeah. was taught that men, women were absolutely last in God's love. Yeah. So sh- this is the environment that she's coming from where she's abused mentally, uh, sexually, physically, re- religiously. And then she goes into the high- highlands where they're much more abrasive with their manner, <laughs> blunt, <laughs> have no courtly manners whatsoever. And then... You know, this, her husband is huge. And to her, big men means pain, Yeah, you know? And so it was so organic for her as she felt more safe with Gabriel for her to feel like she could defy him openly. She did it quietly before, (laughs) even even at the moment where they were about to get married. And she should have just walked down the aisle, like where Gabriel was waiting for her. And even her brother was like, let's go. But she defied both of them and went to his son yes. and included him in there like that. Oh, I love that moment. It was so but good. It was so good. But as she got her, her confidence and she felt she with him and could trust him, then it wasn't like the quiet defiance. It was like open to the point where she was like yelling at the Klansmen. <laughs> just like, because they were horrible. Started, they were so rude. They were so rude. When she started throwing bowls yes, against the wall. <laughs> so good. So good. So good. I loved it. Oh, and that, that was the other thing is, are, are Julie Garwood books always this funny? Because 
that I thought this book was hilarious. That scene where she, the, the throwing bowl scene where she's teaching them all to stand up when she walks in the room and yeah. everyone's up and down 50 times. Right. I almost <laughs> fell out of my chair. I that was so damn funny. And, and I'm like reading it for what the umpteenth time. And I'm still like cackling out loud. They were like, well, is she leaving? <laughs> oh my God. Is she going to eat? Like, it was just so, so good. So good. <laughs> so good. But yes, like all of them have that humor in it. Oh, you know, and, and that's another reason I love her books. Like all of them have that humor in it. And her heroines are so just... <sighs> they're just effervescent that's like the best word I could come up with they're just uh I love them I just love them they're different because their stories are different but they all have this just innate goodness and strength and power about them you know and you know as we were just talking about a friend you know we were talking about female friendships and this is a book there where women are not pitted against each other right. or viciously. In fact, Johanna very Joanna very much stands up for the other women and protects them. Yes. And intervenes when other women are being hurt. And right. It's a remember very- when she like the arrow? Remember that? Oh she, my God. That was one of my favorite scenes. She was so good. And I he was did about not to see kick that her. coming. Me- I actually forgot about that. And when I'm reading, I'm like, go ahead, girl. <laughs> Get him one in the chest. She, he was about to kick her. And she put that arrow in his thigh. Yes. I was like, yes. She and is I, badass. <laughs> I realized when she did that, that I was sort of downplaying her skill, just like Gabriel was. Yes. Was like, oh, how cute. She has a little bow and arrow. That's adorable. And then when that man was going to hurt Claire and she fired, I went, oh my God. <laughs> she, Girl's got skills. She's got mad skills. Yes, right on. And she's using them to protect women. Women. I yep. loved it. Loved it. Now we have to talk about the steam level of this book. Right? Holy moly. Like, do I remember it being this hot? Oh <laughs> my God. And it's you, hot, right? It was so hot. And it made me realize I've been reading too much slow burn romance lately because <laughs> I forgot about these. And I'm going to say old fashioned. I realized that 1993 wasn't a thousand years ago, but this is, this is the kind of romance I grew up on. And, right. And I forgot that... <laughs> Back in the day, we started off with a bang Ooh, and kept going yes, through the whole thing. It kept book. going. We just full steam yeah, ahead. <laughs> it just kept getting better. And so, and I realized like I have been reading and writing a lot of slow burns for a Me? long time. Cause that, like, like <laughs> chapter three, I was going, oh my God. I know. Oh, like, we're already wait, doing this. We're not gonna give her like an ease and end period. And it was frequent. Like I was like, mm-hmm. God, they're like having sex like every other chapter yes i love this, this yeah is- i forgot how many really words <laughs> act because <laughs> right? i've been in this game for like 22 years it's like did i do this like bunnies then no wonder he's always after me <laughs> <laughs> but like what i love about him it's not just like the physical she includes all the emotion in yeah. these, even if they're just like a page or two, she includes all the emotion, even with the, the sex on like their wedding night, because, you know, Joanna, she didn't, she didn't have a good experience with sex, you right. know, and right. she thought she was barren. And after the first year where her husband forcing himself on her, you know, she was grateful he had nurses, you know, because sex was painful was a painful experience for her yeah so for her to experience pleasure this was something like really like just mind-blowing for her you know and it was it was just a great scene to read it really was she can do she can she can really do a sex scene well where it's not you're not giggling at the terminology right right where the many positions you're twisting them into or yeah (laughs) Yeah, no, it was great. And I don't I don't often harp this long on sex scenes in romance, but I mean, I got to say, she just does it 
really, really, really well. Really well. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible I flipped back a few pages and re- reread a few. No, scenes. that's right. Be like, wait, just I feel like I missed something important yeah. here to the story. So let me just go back. Let me like, just check again, just just for the sake of his of research. That's, that's all. That's right. I mean, we're going to be talking about this. Yes. No, it was just, I'm so thrilled you introduced me to this because it was such a satisfying book and satisfying in that way where everyone got a really justified ending and a really well-earned, several couples were formed and you, every one of them was really satisfactory. And yes. And the, the suspense was, I thought that was so clever of her to weave real details of history into this romance novel especially with the suspense element yeah and that was so well played out and then what I call like the Lord of the Rings helm deep moment at the end (laughs) (laughs) you know what I'm talking about I know exactly what you're talking about (laughs) you know even knowing I know how romance novels end and I did have a moment of I don't see a way out of this. Right, right. That's how you know the book is good. You know there has to be an HEA, but you're wondering, I don't know how they're going to do it. Right. I don't don't know how we're going to get there. Right. Oh, that was so satisfying. So good. My God. It was so good. So good. I think every woman in this book had something about them where you saw their strength and they had a role to play even to the old woman when she was captured at the end how she played like she played one of her heroic roles in in that mm-hmm. battle mm-hmm. it's the women were the real heroes of this book yes which is funny because it's a bunch of warring stabby highlanders <laughs> So needless to say, (laughs) listeners, I love this book and I really, really want you to go read it. Such a wonderful book. You will not be disappointed. No. Read it. And I'm sure it's at your library. So go get that. That's where I got mine. My library has a wonderful Julie Garwood section, which see, see, so I've, I've got a, I've got a good month ahead of me. (laughs) Will you tell our (laughs) listeners where they can find you and all of your great work? Yes. I, of course, my website, it's www.naimasimone.com. And I'm on Facebook at Naima Simone Author and Instagram, Naima Simone Author. And you have a release coming out very soon, don't you? I had, um, my, my newest release came out on July 5th and it's called Heated. And my next one comes out in late August. It's book four in my Billionaires of Boston series. And it's called The Black Sheep Bargain. And it's with Harlequin Desire. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Gotta <laughs> love a black sheep. Yes, they're the best ones. <laughs> right? <laughs> Is this a family? Is it a family of billionaires? Yes. It's the whole premise of the series is that it's like a business, a millionaire who owns nation, he dies. And at the reading of the will, three, well, actually three brothers find out that they're related. They didn't know about each other's existence until that moment. And the, the, their father says they have to stay for a year and run his company or they will be they'll get nothing oh so the first three books with those with those brothers are out what we didn't know is that there's another brother who was not included in the will that they don't know about and he's out for revenge against his father but since his father's dead take cared about most which is the company Oh, excellent. Yeah. Drama. <laughs> so much drama. So is this the last one in that series or are you going to get going? Yes. No, it's the last one. Oh, how exciting. Naima, I want to thank you for joining me. This has been a blast talking to you. Thank you for having me. I've had so much fun. <laughs> so much fun talking about it to you. Listeners, I would love to hear what you think of this book and what your favorite Julie Garwood book is. Let me know on Instagram at Best Book Ever Podcast. Links to everything we discussed are in the show notes or at my website, bestbookeverpodcast.com. If you have a book you want to tell me about, click on the Be a Guest button on my website or Instagram bio so we can chat. 
If you enjoyed today's episode, please share it with your favorite Highland romance-loving friend and rate it on your favorite podcast app. Don't forget to hit the follow or subscribe button. Thank you for joining me today, and I will see you at the library. I'm going to need my inhaler on that one. That was hilarious. (laughs) 